it is time we're heading out on a trip so we got to get back to trucking it's early morning right now i'm getting all my stuff into old blue i had taken most of my stuff out or a lot of it anyways and i'm just putting it all back in getting it all organized starting her up we got a trailer to pick up it's taking us down to brainerd minnesota day for trucking. Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. It's not too hot. Definitely. It's not too cold from a Manitoba sto standpoint. Uh, the weather's actually pretty good today. It's nice and comfortable. It's zero degrees. 32 Fahrenheit. We're rocking and we're rolling. I've got a load in the yard. It is tarped. The load god smileth down upon me. I don't know how this happened, but I am grateful. The only downside, well actually wait, there's no downside to that. Actually, well, I'm not gonna complain. Josh, someone tarped your load for you, don't complain. I am definitely not gonna complain that I'm gonna have to carry around extra tarps and extra straps and equipment for the rest of my trip until I can bring it back to the yard, even though I don't have space for it. <laughs> we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. So someone else tarped it for me, one of our city guys went and picked it up. And I am so grateful for that. That is awesome. An awesome way to start the week. Awesome way to get back on the road after the big move. The house is still not settled into, so I haven't filmed an official house tour yet. I don't even know if you guys want a house tour, if you guys care. But I, I care. I mean, I want it to be part of the record on my vlog. It's a big event. I just want to wait till we're a little bit more settled in. I want to show you, like, the finished product. So you, you'll see it in the background of my vlogs and stuff. You'll put it together. But uh, once we have it all nicely settled in, we're happy with it, all the boxes are gone. The garage is cleared out. Yeah, we'll film like a little, little walkthrough. Why not? I also didn't have time, so there's that. Man, it takes a lot of time to move. But I got my Timmy's flowing through my veins. I've got my load that's already tarped waiting for me just up the road here. We're gonna hook on and go. We'll see what's in Brainerd, Minnesota. See what's up. As soon as this gravel truck up here finds its throttle. There you go, buddy. There you go. Right on. Right on. We're not all paid by the hour. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. You can always tell when you find when you're following someone who's getting paid by the hour. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get paid by the load. Percentage of it. The majority of it goes to me because I have the majority of the expenses. Fuel is not cheap. I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, if you guys have driven past a gas station lately or a truck stop. Fuel prices are not in the friendly range. Trailer 544. That's our trailer. I gotta go find it. 544, I believe that's a flatbed, not a step deck. It's not in this lineup. 544, it will have a tarped load on it. 544, I'm not even seeing any tarped loads yet. Wait till we're around the corner. Oh, I think I see it. I think I see it. You see it? I spy with my little eye. A tarped load. Is it mine? Five four four. There she is. Look at that beautiful thing. Wrapped up like a little Christmas present so that I don't have to do it. I'm gonna have to add an extra bungee there on the top, but that's okay. That's okay. 
Nice. That's Caden who did that for me. You guys know my buddy Caden. Thanks Caden from the bottom of my heart. You made my day. I'm so happy that I don't have to tarp today. So I was just talking to Caden, he's just reminding me to put a strap over the back or over here yet just to make sure this tarp doesn't creep forward. And these are just yard tarps. I can just bring them back to the yard here when I'm done. Just old, old ones. That's fine, because the old ones work just as good as the new ones. It's, it's even better when I don't have to put them on. It is that season of changing weather. So whenever that happens around here, the prairies get very windy in spring and fall. So it looks like we're gonna be going right into the wind once again. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Gonna turn on to Highway 210. Take this westbound from Highway 59 here over to Highway 75. Take 75 south. Once you get down to the US at the North Dakota border, Highway 75 turns into Interstate 29. And that interstate will take you all the way down to Kansas City. But we're not going that far. We'll go down to Fargo, North Dakota, then we'll take I-94 eastbound into Minnesota. Actually, sorry, no, I'm wrong. We're going to Brainerd. <laughs> We're gonna go down to Grand Forks, North Dakota, and then take Highway 2, US 2, eastbound through Detroit Lakes toward Brainerd, Minnesota. Brainerd is practically right in the center of the state of Minnesota. I like it there, the people are very nice. It's a nice little town. Well, it's kind of a small city, I guess, depending on your definition of city and town. Like for me, I consider Steinbach like a big town, but legally and officially it is a city. Then what would that make like Chicago and New York, like mega cities, mega metropolises? They're like past the point of city. There's something else, something else altogether. We could just call Chicago a danger zone. <laughs> some parts, not all. Chicago's actually really nice. I've spent some time there. It's a really nice city. It's... I feel a little uncomfortable because I don't know what areas to avoid. Because I know some areas you don't want to be caught walking down the street. In other areas, Perfectly fine, just nice, right? Just... There's just too many people in one place for me though. I mean, you guys who like that kind of thing, you guys go have fun, I don't care. No judgment. I like to have a, a bit of a smaller community. I like to know who's around me. I like to know my neighbors. Cheapest fuel on my route today is right here in Grand Forks, North Dakota. 
at the plot pilot flying J. Let's see how long the lineups are here. It's usually pretty good. We've been going against a light wind all day, which has been fun. But from here, we'll be headed east, so we'll have a crosswind on us, but we'll head over the river into Minnesota. 300 meters, turn right on, 32nd Avenue South. And Minnesota is mostly bush once you get across there, so that'll break the wind for us and we should have smooth sailing the rest of the day. like they're building something here again. I wonder what's going on over there. I wonder if that's Flying J that's building that or if it's the neighbors that own that property there. There we go. All right, let's get some juice and let's get back out there. Fueled up for 128 gallons. 485 liters cost a little over six hundred dollars and now we're gonna get going I'm gonna get this off I like to be comfortable while I'm driving but with an easy reach for the next time I stop got myself a coffee half intense energy half Colombian because I like to party but I don't like to party too hard got another three and a half hours my GPS says I have to look because I was assuming we're gonna take highway 2 across from Grand Forks here now it looks like my GPS has changed its mind we're gonna go down through Fargo and then take US 10 across that actually makes more sense to me and taking highway 2 across okay those of you from Minnesota were probably yelling at your screens already. Take US 10, don't take US 2. I hear you, I hear you now. It's actually uh, 50 kilometers or 30 miles shorter. I don't know why I didn't see that before. All right, old blue, let's go. Our ETA. Brainerd, it's between 4.30 and 5, so we'll say 4.45. Time is now 1 o'clock in the afternoon, three and a half or 350 kilometers to go, or what would that be, 200 miles, 200 and some miles? easier for me to gauge how long things are going to take in kilometers an hour because 100 kilometers is one hour if you're going 100 kilometers an hour so 350 kilometers would take how long going 100 kilometers an hour which is close to my cruising speed three and a half hours but for miles I don't I don't know 200 miles how long does that take Then you got to break it down into 60s. You do about 60 miles an hour, you go 60 miles in an hour. How many times does 60 fit into 200? Well, three and uh, two and a three and a little bit. Three and a little bit. So about three and a half hours, right? Let's get ourselves out of Flying J. We're all filled up with juice. We're feeling good. Got some coffee. Lining ourselves up for a great afternoon of trucking. So we're gonna go south down I-29. Not east on two. I kind of thought before when I said it to you that we're gonna take number two. Take the entrance to the right on I-29. I thought that sounded funny. I feel like it'd be better to go through Fargo, but I said it anyways. Changed my mind. Going through Fargo. Sometime this month, I also have to go and buy two new steer tires. 
tires. It is time. Very, very soon. They're close to $1,000 each Canadian, depending. I'm gonna go shopping around a bit, but probably with eight to $900 a tire. Here we are at Casey's, Pillager, Minnesota. Just 15 minutes down the road from where we gotta deliver this in Brainerd tomorrow. Nice truck stop here for us. And it's raining out, of course it is. Let me show you where we're at real quick. Here we are, out in the corner with our load. Waiting to deliver in the morning. Oh, I didn't realize it was raining. I think it just started raining as I opened the door to go out to show you guys where I was at. Since I got back in the truck here, it just started pouring. So I guess we went out there just in time. So yeah, we're 15 minutes down the road from Brainerd. We'll get up here first thing in the morning, wander over there. Get this lumber off my trailer, roll up the tarps, throw them with the other tarps, and then we'll figure out what's after that. I don't know what's, what the plan is right now, but I know what my plan is, and my plan is to keep these wheels rolling till Christmas. We'll see what happens. Are you guys excited for Christmas yet? Let's not forget about Remembrance Day and Veterans Day. That comes first, and that is very important. Let's not uh, let Christmas overshadow that. Once Remembrance Day is over, I know in the U.S. you guys still do Thanksgiving in November. You weirdos. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We do we do Thanksgiving in October. But uh, we like to get into the Christmas spirit right after Remembrance Day, which is your Veterans Day, on November 11th. So after November 11th, it's straight up Christmas time. But in the U.S., you guys have to wait until after Thanksgiving, which is on, what, the 23rd? The 23rd. So we get Christmas almost two weeks before you guys. <laughs> I'm just bugging you. Uh, Canada and the US are so similar. We are siblings. I consider my American friends to the South brothers and sisters. You guys are family, literally. We share a history. We share a culture, we share a language, and we share the longest demilitarized border in the world. You know, there are thousands of miles of border with Canada and the United States. And we don't gotta worry about each other. We're good. You know what? That makes North America great. America is the big guy on the block, I get it. What we say in Canada doesn't really make a big difference on the world stage. 
It's a good thing we stand shoulder to shoulder with our brothers and sisters in America. You guys are awesome. Proud to have you as neighbors. Proud to be your neighbor. Proud to stand with you. So thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. Don't forget, when you're out there on the highways, keep your head up, keep your eyes on the road, keep your stick on the ice. And please drive safe. We all want to get home to our families. No sense on rushing. The extra 10 seconds you save by driving aggressively is not worth it. See you tomorrow, everybody.